Hello and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Katie Brooks. I'm the CEO of the Ben Chamber of Commerce and I want to welcome you to today's webinar. I want to start off by just going through a few of the logistics. We do have three different speakers today and it's so uh, we'll be taking some Q&A but it'll be at the end. As we go through the day's program, if you would like to ask a question, go ahead and hit your Q&A button and I'll see it in the stream and, and we'll ask the questions. Um, but in the meantime, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, bringing some really in good information to you folks in a very timely fashion. Uh, for those of you who have not already applied for an SBA loan and you're looking to do that for the, the Paycheck Protection Program or the emergency loan, um, time's a wasting. And I hope you are proceeding with your process of, of getting your paperwork in with your local lender. And uh, what we're going to do today is find out a little bit more about the mechanics of that, what you should be thinking about when you apply, um, any questions you may have that um, are relevant to what type of businesses you're, you're running and what types of money you should be going after. And hopefully today you walk away with a lot of, of good answers um, and assistance. So we will also have um, a whole bunch of support materials uh, that the chamber and um, others have collected from the Small Business Development Center. So you'll have that at the end of this uh, webinar, as well as the recording of the webinar itself. So you'll have some resources you can refer back to. So I want to thank Central Oregon Community College and the Small Business Development Center for helping us with this program today to bring this really um, pertinent information to the business community so you folks can uh, get up and, and get your um, get your chit in for that federal funding. I want to introduce to you Ken Bechert, Bechert, sorry. He's the director of the SBDC, and we have asked him to kind of get us kicked off today and tell you a little bit about the SBDC and what they're doing. So Ken? It's a pleasure to bring our knowledge to you about these federal funding offerings. But uh, before we get into the, the mechanics as, as we've uh, suggested, I wanted to give you just a little bit about what the Small Business Development Center does. As Katie mentioned, we're a part of Central Oregon Community College and, and really what we offer is business advice and education to both existing businesses and future business owners to really kind of help them either start their business, grow their business, and really get them to be a successful business organization that's sustainable for a long time. So uh, we do this really through a series of course offerings that we offer um, every term, as well as through our seasons advising staff. We have a staff of seven advisors that have many, many years of experience. Some have banking backgrounds, finance backgrounds, marketing backgrounds, and it's really uh, your tool to ask us questions and we can work with you on a, on a variety of different ways. At the end of this presentation, we'll provide our contact information about how to reach us because we really want to be able to provide these services to you. Katie? Your team with you as well. So what I'd like to do um, is introduce the next two presenters. I'm going to start with Lise Kyle. She's the Capital Access Advisor with COCC, Small Business Development Center, COCC, SBDC, MWSE. And uh, she'll talk today about the mechanics of the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Fund, which is an SBA program, a loan program as well. Um, and then after Lisa's presentation, we wanted to bring the local banking perspective to you. And we have Wendy McGrain from US Bank, uh, she's from the commercial banking team and she's a VP of uh, US Bank as well. To give you a little perspective of what it looks like at the other end, the receiving end of your application, and hopefully uh, offer some insights from that angle as well. But let's get started with Lisa. She's a regional advisor at COCC and uh, the SBDC Network's capital access team. She specializes in helping small business, business owners access debt financing and assembling loan presentation packages. 
Lisa spent more than 30 years as an SBA lender, working for several different banks and non-bank financial institutions, including the past 17 years with COIC, the Central Oregon Intergovernmental Council's regional and SBA loan program. She's a wealth of information and really, really glad that you're here with us, Lisa. I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you, Katie. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. Everybody see that okay? Yep. Okay. So, first of all, I wanted to thank our SBDC network and our funding partners, Business Oregon and the SBA Small Business Administration, as well as Central Oregon Community College. The services that Ken mentioned earlier are all funded by the SBA, Business Oregon, and Central Oregon Community College and allow us to do free one-on-one -on -one advising. Um, there is a charge for some of the classes. Um, these are a couple of websites that um, will get you to us, and there will be more at the end of this presentation. Um, as far as what I want to talk about, there is so much information, and I know that they, there are a couple of things that people really want to talk about, but there are a couple of other things that I'm going to just briefly touch on. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to call it IDLE, um, no pun intended. Um, the SBA Paycheck Protection Program, which just went live on Friday, that's also known as the PPP, and the two other programs that people may not be aware of, the SBA Loan Debt Relief and the Express Bridge Loan Program. Start with some caveats. Um, what is included on this program is what we know right now. Um, information is fast moving. We keep getting additional guidance from the federal and state governments. Um, changes are happening so quickly, so please know that those in the messenger seat are doing the best that we can. Um, this is all uncharted waters. Um, the program's new, there are unanswered questions, um, and honestly, we're getting information that is changing daily and sometimes by the hour. And as always, you should consult with your CPA attorney and banker before making any major decisions. Um, just a real quick timeline. March 6th, um, the federal government just deemed the coronavirus a disaster and said that the disaster loans program that SBA had could be used for these for, for um, economic injury loans. March 18th, they passed the family's first coronavirus response, which was paid leave, free testing, public health workers, um, other benefits to children and families. The big one, March 27th, was the $2 trillion uh, Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Um, that was the CARES Act. It established the PPP, put more money into EIDL, and there was additional money for um, SBA debt relief. Normally, when the federal government enacts something like this, they have a 30-day delayed effective date, but because this was an emergency, they got rid of that 30-day um, rule. Just so you know how fast things have been happening, Friday the 27th happened. Then Thursday, um, SBA gave out their final rules to the lending institutions, and the program went live on Friday the 3rd. That's one day, not even a day that some of the lenders had um, to really put together systems and programs to handle these, these loan programs. Um, just so you know, that beginning the 3rd, applications were accepted um, by lenders from small businesses and sole proprietorships, and then this coming Friday, independent contractors and self-employed individuals can apply for these loans. Um, the EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, is a direct loan from the U.S. Treasury via the U.S. Small Business Administration. It's for small businesses, which are typically 500 employees or less. It also covers owners of rental properties, sole proprietors, and independent contractors, as well as uh, tribal small businesses and some co-ops. Um, there's a website here that will give you some more information. Um, ineligible uh, entities include agriculture, gambling, where more than 30% of revenue is from legal gambling, owners of unimproved real estate, adult entertainment, and cannabis business. There may be hemp exceptions also website. There's no cost to apply, and even if you're offered a loan, there is no obligation to accept it. Um, website for the SBA size standard is right here. Ah, I keep going backwards, sorry. Um, use of phones, funds, it's fairly general. Basically, SBA is looking to cover businesses' losses due to the coronavirus. For instance, if your normal revenues were $100,000, your normal um, overhead was about $80,000, you got a $20,000 profit on a month. Um, if that, because of the coronavirus, all of a sudden your revenues dropped from $100,000 to, say, 
$40,000 and you've still got that $80,000 in overhead, you've got a loss of 80 minus, what did I say, 40? That's a $40,000 um, loss. Um, so basically what they're covering is that economic loss that would include fixed debt payments, payroll, mortgage, rent, lease payments, any payments on short-term debt, like a credit line, accounts payable, and bills. It is not to be used for business expansion. Uh, the loan amount can be up to $2 million. The rates are three and three quarters for small business and two and three quarters for nonprofits. Loan term up to 30 years, but that is determined by SBA on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you get a payment deferral for up to a year, although interest will still be accruing. There is no personal guarantee required on loans up to $200,000. Collateral will be required for loans over 25,000, but an applicant will not be declined solely due to the basis of lack of collateral. SBA is looking for an acceptable credit history or, or a good story as to why not, and that you can demonstrate an ability to repay. It is not a grant, it is not forgivable. There's more on the next page. You can refinance an, an earlier EIDL loan, which was made between January 31st and April 3rd with a PPP, which we'll get to. If idle loans are used for payroll and you get a PPP loan more later, um, those PPP funds must be used to refinance the payroll portion of your idle loan. It is also possible to use idle loan funds for payroll in April and then get a PPP for May and June. This all depends on timing. We're getting a little technical here. Um, so what's all this stuff about a $10,000 grant? We were hearing a lot of talk about that. Um, at the end of the application, which is online, there is a box and you can check it, which it says, I would like to be considered for an advance of up to $10,000. It's considered an emergency advance. It may be forgiven and deducted from the original idle loan amount. SBA states that this loan advance will not have to be repaid. They don't call it a grant. It's an advance, but it won't have to be repaid. If you receive a PPP loan and it is forgiven, the amount to be forgiven will be reduced by the amount of your forgiven idle loan advance. Um, you apply directly online. Here's the website. The application is pretty simple. Um, SBA, typically once they get it, they email you an application number. Write that down. Do not lose it because we've been told that SBA, someone from SBA will be calling you to confirm information on your application. Do not talk to them unless you ask them to repeat to you your application number. This is for identification purposes. If don't have them read it, don't you read them the number, you ask them for the number and compare it to the number you have. Um, they also may ask for additional documentation, which could include a personal financial statement and a debt schedule and any other information they decide they wanna see. Okay, Paycheck Protection Program, the big one. Um, the purpose of this is also to provide cash flow assistance for employers to maintain payroll. That's the big thing, payroll and employees during this emergency. This loan is done by the banks, but it's guaranteed 100% by the Small Business Administration. It is for small businesses with fewer than 500 employees. There are some exceptions. Again, see the uh, size standards link provided earlier. Um, eligible businesses, again, include 501c3 nonprofits, sole proprietorships, independent contractors, self-employed, tribal businesses, veterans organizations, franchises, and others. Um, this website here will give you some more detail on what eligible businesses include, which is also the small businesses, general small businesses with less than 500 employees. Ineligible businesses are those engaged in illegal activity under federal, state, or local law, and other activity that may be de determined by SBA. They get a little bit fussy here and there are some cannabis warnings on this one. Household employers are deemed to not be businesses. Um, if you have had any delinquencies or defaults on a federal loan in the last seven years which caused loss to the government, you would be ineligible. And if any owner of 20% or more of the equity of the applicant business is having legal problems, um, read here, um, there may be some issues uh, in which you may be ineligible. Eligible expenses, again, payroll costs, interest or long or on, interest only on long or short-term debt incurred before Feb 15th, rent under a lease agreement enforced before Feb 15th, utilities and other costs for services which began before February 15th. Um, an eligible expense also would be to refinance an idle loan made between January 31st and April 3rd. 
Um, payroll costs get a little bit technical here, but they are salaries, wages, commissions, tips, um, various um, um, benefits, including vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, group health care and benefits, including insurance premiums. We have not been able to determine whether life insurance is included in, the, in there, but we are pretty sure that, well, health insurance premiums are included. Retirement benefits, state and local taxes impo imposed on employee compensation, and because sole proprietors and independent contractors can apply for a PPP on their own, wages, commissions, income, retained earnings um, from self-employment or self-similar compensation are included. Excluded, any compensation for, for an individual employee who earns in excess of annual salary of $100,000, and it would, this would be prorated for your calculations. Um, comp compensation paid to any employees who, whose primary residence is outside the United States. Um, there's some tax items here that are, that are excluded. Um, qualified sick or family leave wages paid um, if the tax credit is allowed under this family's first phase two or mentioned earlier in the timeline. Um, and when you calculate your payroll, if you have any independent contractors, you have to exclude them because they have the ability to apply for their own PPP. How much can you borrow? It's basically, in a nutshell, two and a half times your average monthly payroll for the last 12 months. Um, so it's two times plus 25%. Maximum loan amount is $10 million. Um, your maximum loan amount may be different, subject to different limitations if your business wasn't operating for um, same period last year. Um, you can also add the outstanding amount of any idle loan made during the time period mentioned earlier. So it's basically some of your included payroll costs minus any excluded payroll costs equals your payroll costs times two and a half plus the amount of your idle loan that's being refinanced. Um, how do you apply? Again, as we mentioned earlier, April 3rd, that was fr last Friday, small businesses and sole proprietorships can apply. This Friday, independent contractors and self-employed individuals can apply. These loans are available until June 30th. There is a funding cap, gap, cap of 349 billion. So the sooner the better. And I know everybody has run into some, fr into some frustrations. Um, some of the lending institutions are only working with their own customers. Some of the lending institutions have um, have specific uh, definitions of what constitutes an existing customer. Keep talking to your lender. It's not that they don't, they do want your business. They want to help you out. They are under tremendous pressure from um, the regulators as well. So everybody needs to work together on this one. Um, you will need to have to complete the Paycheck Protection Program loan application and submit that application with any required documentation requested by your approved lender. There is a website here that has the official application on it. Um, it's the US Treasury. However, some lenders have forms online and they're requiring online submission, so you can't use the Treasury form. Um, you will also need to provide your lender with payroll documentation, including tax filings, 1099s, and other details of income and expenses for independent contractors and sole proprietorships. Um, it's important to know that no collateral is required. Um, no personal guarantee, although remember, this is important. If the funds are used for fraudulent purposes, the US government will pursue criminal charges. You also have to personal, personally certify that current economic conditions, COVID-19, justify this loan request. You will use the, the funds to maintain and retain your employees and payroll. You're going to make, you will use the money for the eligible costs um, discussed earlier. Um, when you receive the loan, you have eight weeks to spend the money on eligible expenses. If it's used to pay eligible expenses as defined above, the loan may be forgiven, forgiven, and the amount forgiven will be reduced by the amount of any idle emergency advance that might have been done previously. Um, you will owe money to your lender if you lose, use the loan amount for anything other than the eligible cost discussed earlier. Not more than 25% of the forgiven amount may be for non-payroll costs. So basically, you get a $100,000 loan, you wanna make darn sure that 75% of that is used for payroll only. Um, you'll also owe money if you don't, if your staff count goes down, your payroll goes down, any employees' salaries are, or wages are decreased by more than 25%. And you, if you've already laid people off, you have until June 30th to restore 
those um, people to full-time employment and salary levels. Uh, how do you get the loan forgiven? You need to work with your lender. Um, basically, you get the loan, you have eight weeks to um, use the funds, and so it would appear to us that any time after those eight weeks, once the loan funds have been dispersed, that you can go to the lender and say, hey, I want to have the loan forgiven. To do that, you provide documentation to the lender that verifies that your FTEs and pay rates are the same or within the, um, the guidelines discussed earlier, and that you've made your payments on eligible mortgage lease or utilities, non-payroll expenses, and the lender will, is supposed to make the decision within 60 days. Um, again, this isn't really important because people think that this loan is, is free money. It's not. You have to meet the rules and play by the rules and use the money for the things that they say you can use it for. Primarily, payroll costs, utility, rent. Um, if you cut your employees' salaries, if you reduce your employee number of em FTE employees, that's full-time equivalent employees during this time period, the loan re forgiveness amount may be reduced. What if the loan isn't forgiven? For any amount that is not forgiven, you will owe that money. It becomes a loan. The interest rate is 1% for two years. Payments are deferred for six months. However, interest will continue to accrue. There is no prepayment penalties and there are no fees on this. Other considerations, you can only take out one PPP loan. Um, you don't have to prove that you were turned down by other loan sources. You can have a PPP and an EIDL loan. You can have both of these. If you receive a PPP, you are disqualified from claiming employee retention tax credit. And if the SBA grants your loan forgiveness request, you will not qualify for deferred payroll taxes. I know this is a lot of information um, and I'm trying to skim over it. Um, do check the websites that we've got attached to the back of this um, presentation. They may help. Um, PPP is different in that the PPP does not require personal guarantees or business collateral. Um, uh, it, both, it's okay if you have access to credit elsewhere. Your PPP loan can be forgiven if you follow the terms. It's a little bit more restrictive. Um, it's primary pay, primarily to cover payroll. And the PPP is handled by lenders versus the EIDL is gotten directly from the SBA. Okay. That's the two big ones. This, I'm just gonna go over this really quickly, SBA loan debt relief. Basically, if you have an existing SBA loan that is current, not past due, um, that has a 7A, a 504, or a micro loan, SBA will pay directly to your lender six months of payments, including principal, interest, and fees. They will also pay principal and interest on new 7A loans issued prior to September 27, 2020. Now, the PPP loan is a 7A. However, it does not, is not included in SBA loan debt relief because you're already getting a payment deferral. Um, payments uh, that, that SBA will be making begin with the first payment due after March 27th. So if you have a 504 loan, your payments were due April 1st, SBA will be making those payments for you. If you, if you make the payment and lender receives your payment, it must inform you that you have the option of the lender returning the money or applying that money to further reduce your loan balance. Um, let's see. And don't bother your lenders because they're busier than heck, but make sure you confirm with your lender that this is actually happening. The other program is the SBA, SBA Express Bridge Loan Pilot Program, EBL. It is only available to existing express lenders, excuse me, only existing express lenders can offer this to borrowers with an existing business relationship established on or before March 13th, 2020. Um, it's a temporary bridge while you're waiting for an EIDL. You can only go a maximum of $25,000. Uh, the interest, maximum interest rate is Wall Street Journal 3. Prime, which is 3.25 plus six and a half percent maximum learn let term of seven years. Collateral is not required. Fees are pretty stiff and the loan will be repaid by the EIDL and your lenders will be following other normal SBA eligibility and underwriting standards. And you have to apply with your express lender who you already have a, a relationship with. These are some helpful websites. Central Oregon SOS has a little bit of everything. This is the EIDL um, application, COVID-19 relief at .sba.gov slash pound slash. Um, PPP info and frequently asked questions on the Treasury website. 
Um, SBA program information is on this SBA website. Um, SBDC, Small Business Development Center, COVID-19 resources is listed here, as is the uh, State of Oregon business resources. Um, the next page, AICPA.org actually has some really good accounting information and help for the PPP, as well as some uh, Excel-based uh, calculator um, tools. Um, BizCenterCAT.org, that's through um, the SBDC, uh, talks about other funding sources, not just SBA. And then this last one here is the SBA size standards. I know that's just been a ton of information. I've been talking fast and tripping over my tongue here. I apologize. But if you have any questions, get hold of us. Um, you can reach us at, at BizCenter.org, SBDC at COCC.edu, and our number is 383-7290. And with that, I'm done, and I'll turn it over to Katie. Thank you so much. Great. That was a lot. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's no wonder that there are a lot of questions out there. It's pretty complicated, and we really appreciate you and your your depth of knowledge, Lisa, thanks. Um, before we, there's a lot of questions popping up and, and I'm reading them and we'll be ready to ask those in just a minute. Before we go there, I wanna introduce Wendy McGrain. Um, she is taking a brief break from um, all that is crazy over at US Bank now trying to get these loans out the door. Um, and uh, we really appreciate Wendy being here. I know she's really highly uh, regarded by her colleagues and her, her customers. We have gone to Wendy many times for assistance in explaining things to our membership. Um, she is, as I mentioned before, with US Bank, um, and she is um, in the commercial lending department, and she also serves on the uh, diversity and inclusion um, efforts at US Bank. She's the ambassador for the Pacific West Division, it is on the Community Banking Employer of Choice Agile team. And really want to thank you, Wendy, for being here today. Why don't you go ahead and um, uh, share with us what, what you're doing. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, Lisa, as well, for all that great information about the various uh, loan programs. And I think just to kick this off, um, Lisa mentioned, don't call your lenders, they're too busy. And what I would share is, um, it's never been more important to be uh, communicating with your bankers, whether the, it's our team at US Bank or whoever your bankers are. Um, I would just recommend um, keeping an open line of communication with your bankers. Yes, we are busy, but we welcome your calls and we very much wanna be supporting all the businesses um, to, um, to be successful during this challenging time with COVID-19. Um, I do manage the commercial banking team for U.S. Bank for the Central and Eastern Oregon region. Um, and we've been very, very busy um, coming up with all kinds of different solutions to be able to support our customers during this time. Um, I know Katie's going to be um, asking me some questions and I'm going to be giving some perspective on what it is like to be boots on the ground supporting businesses in banking right now. But just a few pieces of information before I turn it back to Katie that I just want to share with this group today. Um, in regards to that PPP application that Lisa gave so, my, um, so much information about uh, previously, uh, just this morning at US Bank, um, we received 3,000 new applications um, for the PPP program. And we, are, we currently have funds requested at a little bit over $6.2 billion at US Bank. Um, and our goal is to begin funding those first loans as early as tomorrow. Um, and what that um, means is we had 3,000 new applications come in today. Um, as of yesterday, we were sitting at 23,000 new applications. Um, and those represented more than one million dollar or one million jobs to be assisted uh, through this program. Uh, what we are seeing is average loan sizes are less than 500,000 right now, but I'm going to be sharing more information today uh, about how U.S. Bank is approaching this process. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for that overview. Uh, just a few questions, Wendy, before we let you go. 
that I know that our, our listeners um, are going to want to know. So what is the experience on the ground for you? And if you were going to tell a business owner um, about this process and, and how you developed it, what would you want to share? Thank you, Katie. Uh, so what I would share is every bank um, was given the guidance last week from the SBA on what the rules are for this PPP program. And so every lender out there had to interpret those rules and incorporate them into their processes to support businesses. The way we've opted to approach this at US Bank is we opted to uh, build upon a digital application platform that we've had in place for some time for, um, for a different type of loan program. And we wanted to create a digital experience for all businesses uh, to, to be able to get from application to funding in a very streamlined way. So at US Bank, we began um, pivoting from this platform that we already have for business owners um, and creating a, a, an application so that everything could be done through our digital application. Um, so there, there are varying uh, pieces of information out there. Uh, there. There is a paper application that was published last week on the SBA and US Treasury website. US Bank has opted not to accept a paper application at all. And instead, we've encouraged businesses to go to our usbank.com slash PPP website and fill out the inquiry form to be notified when the digital application is ready for them to apply through. Um, the first version of this application was released to businesses over the weekend. And this version is accommodating businesses that have one owner uh, that owns at least 81% of ownership of that business. We, are, we have bankers working 24 seven right now to um, release version 2.0 of this application that is intended to, um, to offer um, businesses of many different, uh, more complex ownership structures and nonprofits to be able to apply. Um, and for us, our goal is simply, we wanna be able to accommodate all different um, eligible structures of businesses and nonprofits, and we are working around the clock to be able to have a um, digital streamlined experience to get from application to funding very quickly. And we empathize, we work with so many different businesses that are so anxious to apply, and we're very anxious to have our platform up to be able to accommodate their ownership structures, and th that will be coming in the coming days. Great. Um, so there's another question that I know has come up in the queue as well. And that is that a lot of folks are hearing that you need to apply for these loans through your established bank so that there's an established relationship there. Is that how U.S. Bank is approaching this? At U.S. Bank, our goal as we build out this platform for digital applications is going to be to accommodate businesses, all eligible businesses, whether they are existing customers of ours or they are non-customers of ours. Um, this initial version of our application uh, can only accommodate existing customers currently, uh, but we do have a broad definition of existing customers, um, which includes anyone who has an active US bank account which could be checking account, credit card, loan, investment account, et cetera. And this can be personal, business, investment, or com commercial product or service. So we've really um, wanted to open it up to really anyone who's done business with us in the past, regardless of whether it's personal or business. Um, when we release uh, the next versions of our digital application, it, there will be a version that will accommodate non-customers. And that has been our approach um, to be able to accommodate. Great, thank you for that. So um, there are a lot of applications. You just shared your statistics with US Bank. Um, what do you hear of how far or how fast the PPP funds will, will be going? This is a question that we hear a lot. Um, 
Thus far at US Bank, we are not hearing that the money is gone and we are working very hard to accommodate applications from all eligible businesses very soon. Uh, the other thing to share is at this point at US Bank, we have no internal limits for funding this program and we are not anticipating that we will have a cap on funding eligible applications. In regards to the PPP funding from the CARES Act, um, as of this morning, we understand the U.S. Senate has begun the process of recommending an additional $251 billion to be added to that initial $349 billion initially allocated. And we are working um, every angle 24-7 to be able to launch these applications to accommodate all different types of business ownership structures. And we're investing heavily in that right now because um, it's our goal to be able to fund every eligible business who eventually is able to apply with us. Wendy, I want to thank you so much for taking time to be here with us today and answer these questions. I know that you've got to get back to your team. You guys got a, a couple of things going on, I understand. Um, the last question that, that I wanted you to, to comment on before you leave, and, and we have several questions to this issue in the, in the queue. So uh, that is for the sole proprietor. And um, we just heard Lisa share with us a little earlier that that process, those applications open Friday. Is that correct? Yes, so the SBA rules um, when they were released last week regarding the PPP program um, indicated that independent contractors could begin applying for PPP loans as early as April 10th. And so I, what I would share is, is I think it's gonna depend on, on the status of each lender and how they're accommodating applications. I know at US Bank, we are seeking to release a version of our digital application to accommodate independent contractors at, um, as soon as we are allowed to. Um, so I would imagine after that April 10th date, um, we hope to have a digital application re released fairly quickly. And I would imagine um, the, the lenders that are still accepting applications will be doing the same. Um, and I know that's the last question that you had for me. So I would just add to, um, to share that we at US Bank welcome phone calls and don't be afraid to call your banker. Uh, we, this is more important than ever. We wanna be able to offer suggestions and solutions to businesses that are having challenges related to COVID-18, um, whether it's with US Bank or elsewhere. Um, it's more important than ever to be in close contact with your banker. Great. Wendy, I want to thank you again. Um, this was really great information and good insight from the banking perspective of, of what's happening um, at this point in time. And I'll let you get back to your teams. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, so our next process here, bear with me. I'm going to do my best to get to as many of these questions as possible. Um, we have Lisa on the line as well as Kyle to answer them. Um, yeah. I'm going to go through these uh, and, and try and respond to um, the questions that you've been sending in. And I want to go to the first one uh, that's on my screen is the single employee LLC. I've not been able to get a straight answer as to whether or not I qualify for any loans, whether it's the PPP or the EIDL loan. Um, and uh, to pay for office rent, operating expenses, and or my salary, and I have no employees. So what advice would you give this person? I would say they are likely eligible to qualify for either one of those loans, either an EIDL or a PPP. Um, I don't see any, any question with that. You know, it might be the timing on the PPP, but they could certainly start applying with an EIDL right now. Um, a lot of times a single owner LLCs um, on, for tax reasons, they show up on a Schedule C. Um, but other than that, I would just go ahead and apply for both if you can. Okay, thank you. Yes, can I jump in here just for one piece? Sure, on Ken, go for it. Yeah, I, I think one thing to just to recognize for those independent contractors is that with the PPP, you also have an uh, unemployment benefit offering, right? And so you can't take both PPP and unemployment. So if you decide to go with PPP, you're not going to be eligible for unemployment, but you still will be eligible to apply for an EIDL, no matter the case. That's good because that, that you do need to look at, at all of your options and that is definitely an option. Thank you. Great. 
I have a question here from a nonprofit filing, filling out an idol um, who fills out the personal credit history. The online application won't let you advance without this. It asks for a name with no official owner. What do oh, we do? Boy. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's not, I have not run into that before. You're right. I, I've looked at the application and, and there are some nonprofits. There is no owner. Um, my experience with SBA is more information is better than not enough. Um, I try and put something in there. And then if there's a way to um, put an explanation in, I would do that. Okay, great. Um, there are a lot of folks here who say they have filled out the, the EIDL application and yet have not received a follow-up email with their number. Ouch, what do you do? Ouch. Um, we, right now, the EIDL application is version, this is version 3.0. Version 1 and version 2 have can't come and gone. Um, some borrowers filled out and submitted 1 and 2. If they did so, they need to, they should have gotten an email telling them if you were interested in applying for that up to $10,000 um, forgivable advance, you need to go back and fill out the new form. Um, if they have not heard, I would have them do that. Um, the other thing is when you do submit the application, you're supposed to get an application number. We've been told by SBA that once you receive the application number, as I mentioned earlier, write that number down, don't lose it. Um, SBA has hired a number of contractors who should be calling you back. Um, I don't know the timeline on that, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, once you, they call you, you should be prepared to answer questions about your business. Um, remember to ask them what your loan application number is to confirm that they are actually with the SBA. Um, but once they've gone through this with you, if they tell you your loan has been accepted, that's the point which you can start expecting to receive the up to $10,000 advance. Um, and they said, originally they said three days after the loan is accepted. I don't know what the timing is on that. I actually haven't talked to anyone who's received one yet. Okay. Yeah. What I've been sharing about the uh, 10,000 is that um, uh, you'll receive it within three days once you've been, once the loan has been accepted. So you've been contacted by a loan officer themselves. So it's not necessarily three days of submission. It's when it's actually been received by the SBA and a loan officer has looked at it. Okay. All right, um, another question. If someone checks advance on the idle of $10,000 and their calculation of need comes in less than $10,000, could they just receive the grant and not have a loan? For very small businesses that just need a few thousand to get them through the next couple of months, this seems like the best option. Is this what your understanding is or, or are we missing That's something? <laughs> That's kind of a tough one. Um, my understanding from SBA the other day was that these up to t up to ten thousand dollars, not guaranteed ten thousand. It's up to ten thousand is based somewhat on the number of employees you have. Um, I've also been told by SBA that the maximum amount per employee is a thousand dollars. I know that hurts a lot of people who are expecting a ten thousand dollar advance. Um, know that and then consider whether it's worthwhile to, to fill it out. I mean, a thousand dollar advance, um, forgivable advance, why not? Um, but I, you, you really need to do the math on it. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, I started a company in November. I have had a distribution, but no official salary yet. Boy, this is a start startup story, isn't it? I was planning drawing a salary on Q2, but now that won't be possible. Do I qualify for the PPP or do I to, to pay myself? <laughs> God, that's a tough, you know, that's, that's one of those questions that we don't have answers for yet, uh, draws and, and distributions. Uh, I just have not heard a final word from SBA on how they treat that. Um, boy, I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't really have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a, that is a tough one. Um, lots of questions around uh, when do you bring back employees? Are they full-time? Are they part-time? Um, but let me start with this one from um, 
from Carrie. You said you can't reduce the number of employees. What if you wanted to replace two part-time employees with one full-time employee um, or change who the person is? Does it have to be exactly the same people with the exact same FTEs or part-time uh, Is What is the comparison of the layoffs to as you bring them back, as you get the PPP money in? What are the reasons? Yeah, my understanding of that is that they need to become they need to come back by how many what was that date? Was it June thirtieth? They need to be brought back by. Um, the other part of that is SBA is not looking. My understanding is that SBA is not looking specifically at which employees individually. They're looking at the at the salaries and they're looking at the number of FTE. So replacing two half timers with a full timer is not going to make any change to your FTE. Okay. Yeah. And to build upon that, they're really going to be looking at the dollars as opposed to the number of people, right? Because they're going to look at last year's amount of payroll dollars comparison to this amount of payroll dollars this in this eight-week period and say, okay, how, how is it different? FTE doesn't matter as much. It's about the dollars. Great. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard this question out in the field a lot, too. Um, can temporary or contract staff count as an FTE cost, even if they're not your actual employee? No, not under PPP. Contractor or independent contractors are, they are able, able to file their own PPP, so they must be excluded from your payroll. Okay. Well, here's another question. We use a third party payroll administrator. Our lender insists we submit forms 941 for the year 2019. They aren't accepting documentation from the TPA. What are your options? Jan, you got something for that? Well, there's no reason why, you know, a, TP, a TPA is gonna file that particular tax document and 941 is a quarterly tax document, just like they would on an individual basis. So I'm not sure why the lender is saying no, it's a standardized federal document that would be accepted from the employer or the third party com company that does it on their behalf. So I would go right back to the lender to say, this is the official document. It doesn't make a difference who fills it out. Okay. For those that have already paid off employees and would like to bring them back with a PPP loan, can you clarify the forgiveness portion? The requirement state 75% spent on payroll does this have to be 75% of the total loan amount or can it be 75% of what we spend and are requesting to be forgiven? For example, a loan amount of $200,000, spend only 100,000 total with 75,000 on payroll. So you've got a, a loan amount of $200,000 and you only used 100,000 of it. So you basically prepaid the loan so you've got it now. You have a, a remaining loan of a hundred thousand, and you use seventy-five percent of that, or seventy-five thousand. Boy, um, <laughs> rationally, it makes sense. Um, I would talk to your lender on that one. Honestly, it it should work because it you know it turns out you didn't need as much as you requested. So why not just reduce the loan amount to the hundred thousand? and then use 75% of that on payroll. That, that would make sense to me, but I would discuss that with your lender. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I got a, a quick question here. Again, I think a lot of people are weighing their options. Um, this person says there are three owner LLC. We're trying to stay in business, but if we can't, if, if they can't get this loan or if they just can't hold on, is it possible for them to apply for unemployment? Do you folks know? Ken? Three person LLC. So they're all within one company. So they're not individual contractors. That's what it appears to be. Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess technically they could file for, well, that is a tough one. Could they really file for unemployment? You know, I mean, I guess my sense is, is that they could apply. There's no question they could, they could apply, but the question is, would they actually be approved for it under the day? And based upon these new uh, expanded rules, we're still right. getting some interpretation coming through from unemployment. I think that the best option would be is go ahead and apply for the unemployment. And when that employment 
individual calls, speak with them about, here's the actual situation, see what the qualification is. You'd hate to try to defer two or three weeks down the road where they don't have the application to start it. Get them in the queue, let them work through it, and wait for that call. Okay, thanks. That's a tough one. I, I know a lot of people are falling into that category. Um, and it's my understanding too that the broadening of, of the acceptance of unemployment claims um, might be the, the way to go. I'm not an expert though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, here's another one. If employees have been furloughed prior to obtaining this loan, how will FTE for returning staff to prior levels by June 30th be calculated? Based on the most recent payroll, an average over the course of the period of eight weeks or some other method? My sense is that it would, the payroll would have to be, they, they bring them back and then they would pay them um, out of the PPP funds. I know that's not real specific. I'm not sure how that would calculate. My guess is, or my sense is that they would, when they bring the employees, they bring the employees back once they receive the PPP loan and then pay them going forward. Yeah, and, and the way it's been explained to us is, again, they'll look, at, they'll look at the payroll from last year during a given period, and then they'll look at the payroll during an eight-week period since they brought them back. They got to make sure they're back by June 30th, and they'll look at that to say, okay, let's use a fictitious number. Last year, you spent 100000 on payroll. This year, you spent 90000 on payroll. Here's how you're eligible for the forgivable portion of it. Okay. Um, here's another really relevant one. Uh, for dentist offices that are required to be closed through the 16th of June and want to wait to bring back their employees, can they wait to use the PPP money because they simply cannot go to work? And then how do they spend the money in eight weeks following <laughs> the loan if their employees are flir furloughed? Wow. Uh I'm not sure I have a real great answer for that one. Um, I've heard um, someone say that, you know, well, well, what if I, you know, they want me to spend the money within eight weeks of getting the loan. And what if there's nothing for the employees to do? Maybe they should go on unemployment. I get the, the intent of the, the PPP was to maintain payroll. Maybe they want you to bring them back. I, I honestly don't know if they want you to bring them back, even if there's nothing for them to do. Let's say you got your loan on uh, May 31st. Now you've got eight, you know, two months to, to eight weeks to spend the money and you can't open your dentist office until June 16th. That's two weeks that um, I guess maybe you pay employees for doing nothing. I'm not, I'm honestly not sure on that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, you know, the, we're seeing this over and over and over again, right? And again, the intent of the PPP is to get dollars flowing to individuals to keep that payroll flowing, right? So that can either happen through PPP or that can happen through unemployment, if you think about it, right? Those employees have laid off, they're getting dollars from employment. So, you know, the, the, the thing to think about is, is, is yes, if you do bring them back, and even if you don't have work for them, you could still qualify for the forgivable portion of the loan itself. You know, uh, I've talked to several businesses that they're talking about painting, having staff paint walls, have them do other <laughs> kinds of projects they have not been able to get to because they've been running the office itself, right? So there are some creative things that you can do to think about, well, I do have a labor pool. How do I utilize them in a different way for work that we haven't been able to get done in times past? Makes sense. All right. Um, Regarding the PPP, if we maintained our full staff for the eight weeks following the issuance of, loan, of the loan, but then dropped our staff after the eight weeks, will the loan still be forgiven? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you get the loan forgiven before you drop your staff. <laughs> Wise advice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I think that's probably <laughs> good advice. Um, Let's see, here's, a, here's an interesting one. We make a product that primarily is sold business to business, so sales have been dramatically dropped, but we're trying to maintain some business through direct to consumer and have laid off our employees to apply for unemployment, but both founders still are working to keep businesses afloat, though income doesn't offset those expenses. 
how would we be able to get PPP so that the founders can get assistance for our pay and lease costs, but we, but we can't bring back employees is there's not enough business yet. So kind of the same thing. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's a really tough one because, wow. Um, because they're abiding by stay at home orders as well. So, right, right. Like, but you know there there are there are a couple of options, right? Again, like we said, PPP is really designed to get dollars back into employees, individuals, so they can continue to spend, whether they can do it online or takeout or whatever it may be. So it may feel like, oh my gosh, why would I bring people back and have not have them do anything? But that's really what the intent of the program is to do: is to get money flowing again. Mm -hmm. um, if if they do need operating expenses to pay for their um, lease to pay for their ongoing expenses, you know, what you name it along the way, supplies, ongoing lease commitments that they have, you know, PPP allows you to use some of those dollars for that. But the reality is that better solution is the EIDL. Okay. Um, I'm going to go quickly here and get one or two more questions in. I became an escort in 2019, but I did not create a payroll for myself until 2020. The SBA products are requesting my 2019 form 940, but I don't have this for 2019. How do I show that I am now showing a payroll, but was not for 2019? Can I take, let me take a stab at this yeah. one, Lisa? So the way I would do it is actually show on your, using documentation from 2019 of what your net income was for your business before you flipped over to an S corporation. And then in the explanation say, hey, the income shown prior year was because it was under a legal entity of X, maybe that was a sole proprietorship or some other way. And then in 2020, we moved to an S corp. That's why there's no 941 that's been filed. Okay, that's good. So what happens if Kate Brown extends the business closure date, Governor Kate Brown extends the business closure date past June 15th and the eight week period has lapsed to bring employees back on? When last week you had a, you had um, Ron Wyden and uh, um, Merkley on and they were talking about Congress working on phase four. I would keep my fingers crossed for phase four that they change the dates and extend these programs and add more money to them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's not just a state of Oregon issue, right? You know, Washington True. is facing this, California is facing this, and states on the East Coast are facing this. Is It's possible it does extend beyond this June 30th date. Okay. Last question really quickly. Are there any businesses you're advising not to pursue this PPP? And, and if not, why? Probably it would be businesses that are in the ineligible category. Um, other than that, no. All right. So, it, it makes sense. It makes sense to, you've got to do your numbers. Does a PPP make sense? Does unemployment make sense? Does an EIDL make sense? Um, talk to your banker, talk to your CPA. And then Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. And I truly apologize to those of you who have sent in um, your questions and, and we just simply didn't have time to get to them. Please go to the SBDC website, contact them. Uh, we're gonna make this material, this recording available to all of you. A couple of reminders before we sign off here, the Ben Chamber and OSU Cascades jointly put up a, a regional website that Lisa alluded to earlier, it's called centraloregonsos.com uh, and that URL is what you enter uh, to get directly to it, centraloregonsos.com. It has all of the, the links that were referred to here for um, business owners and employers, has a lot of unemployment information for employees looking for assistance and also a really great uh, bank of, of community assistance um, in that section as well. I encourage you all to go there uh, also, in answer to some of your questions, what other cash is there out there for especially near, near term? There is a group of folks who are working on um, 
onboarding a new website uh, called SOS Bend. It is not up and running right now. What we're doing is trying to attract and, and talk with businesses here in Bend specifically who are looking to connect with their customers for a direct uh, advanced investment, um, a purchase in their business for goods and services. And we're looking to upload local businesses. If you are interested in signing up for um, future credit pass through, this is money that will come from the customer directly into your bank account and hopefully bridge the gap that you're experiencing right now. Please reach out to contact at MainStreetSOS.org. Contact at MainStreetSOS.org, and we can get your business uploaded. Um, this is something that will be out in, a, in another week or so, but we really need to populate it with local Bend businesses before we get it out to the public. So please, um, if you're interested, let us know. I want to thank everyone, Ken, Lisa, and, and Wendy, for being on uh, this webinar today. I hope you found it useful. Really want to wish all of you the best of luck and let us know if we can be of further assistance. Be safe out there and good luck.